Hey guys, welcome back to the channel. If you've been here before, you'll know that uh, my name is Chris and I was a real Hawk T1 pilot back in the day. This video is going to be uh, flying the Tacan approach, a full tutorial, but it's fairly quick. I've sped up some of the sequences. Here we are, you can see at flight level 65 inbound, the inbound radial. Uh, I'll put links into the charts and all the resources in the links below so you can check them out and follow me along, but I'll put it on screen as well. So the initial point, I'll be uh, intercepting the inbound radial, that's 039 I have set up. I've got 21 X-ray for the TACAN dialed in, and I'm looking for that initial approach fix, which will be at 14 miles on the 219 radial, which is reciprocal of the 039. Other things you might want to check out is at the end of this video, I'll put in a full uh, description of this um, instrument approach plate so that you can follow through in slightly slower time and look at the detail that I'm pulling out and using for whilst I fly. So here we are, we're established on the uh, course inbound. Uh, and a uh, note, I've put the wind at about 310 and 20 knots. So we'll talk about that in a minute. If I fly this plus or minus 100 feet, I'll be a happy bunny. Um, but I'm doing a lot of other stuff at the same time uh, and this is the first time I've actually done this so it's going to be a little bit scrappy but I'll talk you through the detail. So here we are 14 miles we're taking a right hand turn uh, now when we turn outbound on this radial we're looking to go outbound to 19 miles before turning back in for the initial approach fix. I've already mentioned the wind once so what I've done is I've calculated my max drift based on doing about four miles a minute and that works out to be a maximum drift of five degrees. So reciprocal 219, I'll roll out on 219 and I'll add on 15 degrees to counteract the wind because the turns are all flown at 230 knots and 25 degrees angular bank. So they are fixed, so you need to compensate for the wind somehow. So the techniques I'm using is the event technique. So now I know my next event is 19 miles. And at that point, I'm going to do a right hand turn 25 degrees. And you can also talk to air traffic and say you're turning inbound for the procedure. Halfway through this turn, you'll notice me start to ease off my bank because I'm looking at the course deviation bar and I notice that it's not coming back in as quickly as I want it to. Either wind is probably slightly stronger or I've miscalculated the uh, maximum drift. But we're within one dot of deflection. You can see the dots at the bottom of the HSI scale, whereabouts the uh, course deviation is. And I'm just trending inbound. And my next event is going to be 14 miles when I hit my final approach fix point alpha. And it'll be a right hand turn descending down to my next altitude, which is 2,500 feet. And I'll be intercepting the 12 dimmy arc. Now I've got 1013 set because that's the default altimeter setting in this sim. It's also the standard pressure setting. So at the point you get to point alpha, you can then change the QFE or QNH. But I'm just going to imagine I've got QFE based. Um, so here we go. The right hand turn, I've put the course uh, correction, I've put the green needle, i.e. what's pointing at the TACAN, to the nine o'clock position on the HSI. That means that if I'm a BMIT flying perfectly perpendicular, I'll keep my range. But as I keep progressing, you'll see that the uh, needle go after, I'll go towards the eight o'clock position and the range starts to increase. So this is a technique called 50 pencing in the fact that when it goes after, the range increases. So I'll turn left and put the pointer, the uh, arrowhead of the needle ahead of the nine o'clock position and then we'll start getting slightly closer. So we stay around about that 12 dimmy arc. Uh, an error I put in here, I descended too quickly. So I put about 70% RPM and got down early, but that actually helps me out because it allows me to settle and think about the next event, which is the lead radial, which we'll talk about shortly. So the weather's not particularly great. You can see a bit of landfall, we're over the water. And now I'm looking at what I need to set up. You'll notice the course bar is changing now. So I'm now changing not the um, 039, I'm changing it to my final approach track of 307. The heading bug I've got set to the lead radial, which is 137. And the lead radial will start our left turn to intercept the Takan uh, final approach track. So we're not quite there yet. At this point, if you were doing an intercept to an ILS, once you turn at the lead radial, you can then set up for the ILS and achieve the localizer. And if you haven't seen my Hawk T1 ILS tutorial, then I'll put a link above uh, for that. Down to the left, 11 o'clock, you'll see an airfield, that's Canairfin. And if you haven't seen my checklist, Cold and Dark for the Hawk, I'll put a link for that one. And that is actually getting airborne and landing at Canairfin. So here we go, we're about to intercept. We're now a left turn to turn inbound. Now I'd either do a 45 degree cut, I 45 degrees off the final approach track, or if the course deviation bar keeps coming in, then I'll just roll out on the center line and adjust as required.
Excellent, so now we're here, I'm looking at the ranges. So as long as I'm within one dot deflection on the HSI, the course deviation bar, I'm established on the inbound. Uh, so you'll see now I'll start des um, descending down to an altitude of 1410. Uh, I go for about 1400, but actually I go lower than that. Within 100 feet, I'm happy, like I say. So 5.2 miles, 1400 feet is good enough. And that'll be my final approach fix to start descending. So here we go, configuring. Remember, below 200 knots, so I used a bit of speed brake to finish that off. And we're now configured 87 to 89% to hold 150. Now, a slight bug, I'm not sure, I'm fairly sure there's supposed to be decimal ranges on that DME, so I'm kind of guessing now because I've only got the whole miles. So at 5.2, I'll start my descent down. I'll set about 700 feet rate of descent based on my glide slope uh, requirements at the speed that I'm flying. And if you haven't seen my PA44 ILS tutorial that includes rates of descent calculation, I'll put a link uh, to the top right. And the rest is just cruising on down. Remember at the top of drop, you don't change the power setting, you just drop full flap, lower the nose and achieve uh, an attitude that gives you the rate of descent you want. Now, bottom right of the chart, you can see the altitude you'd be looking at for five, four, and three miles, which work out quite nicely. So here we are approaching our minimum descent altitude if you're using QNH, or minimum descent height if you're using QFE. So for class D, a uh, correction class C, which is what this aircraft is, that's about 440 with QNH. And then once you're visual with the airfield, you can continue on down either required visual references. 300 feet, you ought to be about 130 knots. And then the approach speed at this stage is about 118 for the threshold. So that's it. That was a quick and dirty dive into the Takan 31 at RAF Valley. Um, probably a bit too quick. Feel free to rewind and take another look, take some notes. Uh, for those of you still here, thank you so much for watching. Um, please like, subscribe if you found it at all useful. And now I'll include the complete tutorial in how to review the approach plates themselves. Okay, so as promised, this is the deep dive into the approach plate for the Takan Runway 31 at Aria Valley Echo Golf Oscar Victor. This is the current chart. It's available from the AIDU MOD website. I'll put a link in the description below. It's free to everyone. You don't need an account for it. So the approach plate is current as of 25th of March, 2021. Now you see various bits of information along the top row. You can see the elevation of the airfield is 36 feet, which makes sense because it's right next to the sea. Uh, lots of other bits and pieces. We've got the Valley Channel, uh, correction, the Victor Yankee Lima Takan Channel 21, which is what you need to fly the approach with. And you've got various frequencies as required. Usually these would be presets that you don't have to dial in manually. And noting the ATIS is a Victor frequency, normally military aircraft to be using UHF. On the top down view, you can see that the uh, minimum safe altitude for you to fly at would be at 1,900 feet on the QNH if you're north and west, or if you're over Snowdonia to the south and east, and that's 5,600 AMSL. And that's within 25 miles. Other things you can take from this, you can see it's a repeat of the 21 X ray information. If you see a 21 with no um, letter afterwards, that means that it's a X ray, not a Yankee. The initial approach fix is the first thing you're going to be approaching when you do this procedure and generally you uh, brief these um, plates as you would fly them. So you can see point alpha, Victor Yankee Lima, uh, which is 21 x-ray like we know, is the 219 radial at 14 DME. Uh, the hold is at flight level 65 and nothing less. And it's a right hand racetrack between 14 miles and 19 miles, which is the point at which you turn back. The maximum altitude or correction flight level for this hold is flight level 110. Out of the uh, hold, you'll be taking a right hand turn on the 12 DME arc, uh, passing over Kinefin, which you will have seen for the uh, video if you just watched it. And then the lead radial is 137, and then you'll turn left inbound 307, which is your final approach track on the Takan. Uh, you'll see 10 DME reference is your initial fix, not that that's usually used. Uh, but more importantly, the final approach fix is at 5.2 DME. At that point, you start your descent, and then at 2 DME, you would do missed approach or land if you had the required visual references. Other things here, you'll see the danger area, so Delta 201 Bravo and Juliet are very close to the hold, and they're referenced in the next part. We scroll down to the second half of this plate, uh, you'll see that you get a side representation. So point alpha is again highlighted here, all the details as we've just discussed. 
once you leave there, 12 DME arc. But this, um, with a line underneath flight level 65, it means don't go below until you're past the initial approach fix. Then you'll clear the descend down to 2,500 feet. Now the bold numbers are based on Q and H, and the lighter colored, or either non-bold numbers, are based on QFE. The approach I flew uh, for demonstration purposes, I just left 10, th I left 10 13 set, which is technically the Q and H, uh, as well as the standard pressure setting. But I flew to the easy numbers, 2,500 feet, because it's within 30 feet. The reason these numbers are different is because of the elevation of the threshold. So you'll see down here, threshold elevation is at 23 feet above uh, mean sea level. So if you're flying AGL on the QFE, then it's 2,500 feet. But if you're flying AMSL, you need to add on that extra 23 feet, round it up to a whole 10, so 2530. So that's the initial fix at 10 miles, um, but generally you'll go down to 2,500 feet on the QFE. Once you're established inbound on 307, you can descend down uh, to your final approach fix altitude, which on the QFE is 1380. Now I use in the video 1400 because it's just easier to, to see on the altimeter. Uh, from this point, you, have, you see the ranges underneath. So at 5.2 miles, you'll start your descent and you're expecting a three degree glide path to uh, get to your minimum descent altitude. Now it's a minimum descent altitude if you're getting Q and H, but again, if you're QFE, then you're at a minimum descent height, height above ground. So for a category C aircraft, if you've got Q and H set, your minimum descent altitude is 440, or if you're using QFE, your minimum descent height is 420. This is the altitude or height that you go down to once you've started your descent until you either reach your missed approach point and you have to go around or you see the runway in good time and you can make a safe approach. Now, underneath it says 1,500 meters. That's the visibility requirement for this approach. On the right hand side, you'll see various notes. We've already talked about the danger areas. Uh, the hold entry, importantly, is restricted to along the 219 inbound. That's uh, this point here. So inbound the uh, point alpha in a northeast heading or by the outbound leg on the 202 radial to 19. So that's the dotted line heading uh, down towards the 19 DME point. So that's critical to how to join this hold. You may have seen on other civilian approaches that you'd have three uh, sectors to join from, either a parallel, an offset, or a direct. This kind of fits more in with a direct entry, the sector three join. Another important note, the final approach track, the FAT is offset by five degrees right of the runway center line. That means if you look at the runway QFU here, that's the uh, magnetic um, track of the runway, if you like, so 312. Our final approach track is 307, so it's uh, a five degree difference. So as you fly down the approach track, when you look up at your minimum descent height, you'll be looking uh, for the runway to disappear off to the right rather than being directly ahead of you like you'd normally have perhaps on ILS. A quick note for the ALS, ALS stands for Airfield Lighting System. If that's um, inoperative for CAT-C aircraft, you'd uh, increase this 1500 meters to 1900 meters. Not gonna be a factor for us today. Uh, another interesting note, DME for the TACAN reads uh, one DME at the threshold. So by the time you get down to two miles, if you take off the one that is at the threshold, then you're one mile away from the threshold. And a quick bit of maths, if you're at 420 feet AGL, which is your minimum descent height, and you're one mile away, that gives you about a 4.2 degree glide path to get down to the runway threshold, which is pretty steep. You could land slightly long, it's a long runway, um, it's not impossible, or do a quick correction, but not aggressive. A couple of notes, avoiding various towns and lakes, and then the tack un unlocks and a position to the northeast, so that's no factor. Other important stuff on this plate is you'll see down the right hand side here, not that it's highlighted very well, but you've got the DME range from the TACAN and height or altitude that you should be at during the approach. So we mentioned that the three degrees you should be uh, roughly flying to descend down to your minimum descent height. Here you can see if you left uh, the final approach fix at 1380 at 5.2 miles, 0.2 miles later using three degree uh, rate of descent, then you should be at 1,320. At four miles, you should be at 1,000. At three miles, you should be 690 feet AGL, etc. So you can set your required rate of descent and you can cross-check based on your range, which is really useful.
And that's the only thing we really use. There's some timing down here from the final approach fix to the missed approach point, but we don't use that. We use the ranges because the TACAN's available for us. And that is uh, the look at the approach plate. So thanks very much for watching this. If you're still with me, Mazel Tov, uh, please chuck a like in if it was useful, uh, but chuck a comment in as well if there's something else you'd like to see. I always take requests uh, and I'd really appreciate it if you can hit the subscribe just to support the channel. But until the next time, take care.